this is Cheryl interviewing Bro. Not what? Are you going to ask me questions? Yeah, or? and you okay. can just talk. Okay, Peter. So, uh, t what is the date today? Today is Sunday. Back up. <laughs> Sunday the 19th. Uh huh. Um, it's a Zoom. Okay. We're doing Zoom, and uh, each year I do have a party here. Oh, yeah. And I decided to uh, invite uh, 12 artists to collaborate with me on doing artwork. I'm, I'm a figurative artist, a contemporary figurative artist, and uh, I've given 12 cutouts to different artists in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the Silver Lake community? Or uh, Silver Lake community? Civil, some are in Silver Lake, uh -huh. some in Pasadena, mm -hmm. uh, and they've interpreted somehow uh, the theme of the hybrids, so working with my the impetus of the, the figure and the, each one, each artist has chosen to do something with the idea of the single figure. Uh, some with the ground, some are not. Uh, so there's uh, some of it symbolic, some of it is more narrative. Uh, but the idea is for me to intervene uh, somehow with the making of the art, either in the cutout or except for example Rebecca Mendez has worked on a film and uh, she gave me stills on the film and I actually did some hand work on it. Uh -huh. Why don't you talk about the two pieces or three pieces next to you here? Uh, Who are the artists? Piece is by with this one over here? Rio, the, and it's called Caricias Muertas. Uh, which in means English, it's called Dead Caresses, although it doesn't translate very well. I'm sorry, could you say the name of the artist again? Miguel Angel Murillo. Mm. Yeah. And uh, he works with uh, sort of a Mexican symbology, working with a cactus form and the hands. The color, the, the purple, is my input, and I must mention that the, uh, the all of the pieces are done on sin skin, which is the the material that I choose to work on, which is a translucent material. So the work, the paint is applied on both sides of, uh, of the surface. Uh huh. So it's not really a canvas, or it's a kind of canvas. It's a fiberglass paper. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. That's translucent. And that's what you usually. Work, uh, I've been working with, on yeah. it for 25 years. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Is this the same artist over here? No, this is my piece, and oh. this is actually the cutout. It was transferred on a piece of mesh. Uh, very simple uh, kind of window screen mesh, and the material is acrylic and crushed glass oh, in sorry. different. Uh, uh -huh. and different crush, colors of crushed glass. I see. Okay. Same uh, figure. Uh, and the artist is Oksana Badrak. Wait, one second, Russian. one second. Sorry. There we go. Okay, could you say that again? This figure? This figure is the same, taken from the same figure. Uh, my piece here, right. mm -hmm. but Oksana uh, chose uh, themes from Russian illustrations, uh, the, uh, the actual birch trees, kind of inter, almost like an interlay uh -huh. of a figure on top of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, this piece is by Michael Walker, J. Michael Walker. Uh, he recently had a show in the cathedral in LA, and his theme is uh, his interpretation of uh, colonial, Spanish colonial influence in. Uh, uh, in Los Angeles, and I gave him, he chose a cutout of the older woman, and he worked on the side in a kind of projection of a kimono like uh, image of, of a uh, 
Japanese, Japanese woman. Do you know why he chose that? I'm not sure. Okay, I'm we'll talk sure. to him. I guess. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Go ahead. So, this is like Trevor it. Norris. Trevor Norris. Yeah. You should talk yeah. to him about it. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so it's kind of uh, suspended here. This is a still from uh, the film that's showing in the back. And the, uh, the single figure is coming out of the landscape. And what Rebecca, since I couldn't collaborate on the film itself, uh, I she gave me stills from the uh, from the film yes. and I the film was in Iceland, right? It's in Iceland, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I intervened by writing Adam's that's her husband uh, name in in a Russian script here, and then I uh, I did some handwork with acrylic ink mm -hmm. and charcoal, so it looks like an emerging mm -hmm. figure come out, coming out of. A, Oh, great. Hey, Horizon. This right. is another version of the same thing. The same thing? Same. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, tell me your name. Uh, Ramon Munoz. And uh, where's, wh where's your studio? My studio is nearby, near Vermont, Beverly. Uh-huh. Oh, I see. And have you known Peter for quite a while? Mm -hmm. No, I was a kid, 25 years ago. <laughs> really? How, how did you first meet him? Well, I knew his work before I actually met him, and then through mutual friends, uh, we got to know each other, and then for a time I was an administrator at Art Center, and he actually worked in a department I chaired. I see, I see. Have you ever collaborated before? No. Mm -hmm. So tell me uh, how this came, piece came about. Well, uh, Peter asked me if I wanted to participate, and I said, that sounds interesting, why not? And he gave me a piece which he had actually already done some work on. It looked like a little so I kind of hung it on the wall. And so I took it home and thought about it, and for me, the problem was how do you put work on someone else's work without either trying to uh, dominate mm -hmm. the piece or cancel out the original piece. Mm -hmm. So giving that a lot of thought as a problem, um, I considered what the whole process was about. I, it was certainly a collaboration because I was collaborating with Peter who produced the piece. Um, I also found that it dealt with this issue of appropriation because I was taking someone else's thing and trying to make it mine. I see. And for me, it was a big challenge, the idea of making something which would not at the same time cancel out what was there before. So, um, embracing the idea of collaboration, uh, I had a student who was actually working in my class on an entirely different project, working with uh, paints that glow in the dark with black light, but that you can't see it during the day uh, or when the lights are on. And I thought, boy, that's an interesting <laughs> medium. In fact, his name's on the wall along with Peter's and then Ed Goth, who sells these books on, on stencils. And so, what's your student's name? Uh, my student's name is Scott. Um, Scott. Scott. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. Scott. Scott. Uh -huh. And um, so I started thinking of ways of applying things to the piece that you could only see see under certain lighting conditions. Otherwise, if you bring the piece out here, you won't see anything because all of the inks and, and paints, it's aerosol actually, they're invisible without a black light. So, that ended up fulfilling a number of things I wanted to do. I didn't want to uh, dominate Peter's piece. In fact, I couldn't understand how to do that really. And uh, by doing what was done in that room, essentially I was able to kind of allow both uh, realities to happen. The reality of my celebration of this idea of Peter's, while at the same time not really leaving uh, a major uh, impact on anyone's sense of what the piece was originally. What, what would you say your style of art is? Do you do... Uh, I'm an abstract painter. Abstract. Paint you don't do figures. No. 
Uh -huh. I, I have in the past, but not lately. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. uh, so this was uh, kind of different. It is, and I collect know. figurative art. Mm -hmm. People are oh, so much did? better at doing it than mm -hmm. I am, mm -hmm. that I would just as soon buy their work. Mm -hmm. and do it I see. How long did you take uh, to do this piece? I've been working on it about three weeks. Oh, is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I could only work on it at night when it was dark. Oh, that's right. You know, yeah. and I'd turn on the light and look at what I'd done and turn it off and turn it on again. Mm -hmm. So it was mm -hmm. kind of an interesting Let's see if we can open the curtain and okay. get a shot of it. Let's see if okay. we can. Well, let me turn the light around. Camera like that. I see it. All right. When yeah. you can't really see any of the work it's kind yeah. of invisible and it spins around and then when i shut off this and getting it to rotate there it goes it cut yeah maybe you could hold it for us it should rotate okay. back and that okay. thing sort of rolls it about okay i think what happens is it spins so much it gets tight mm -hmm. now if i shut off this the light switch okay you can see now, oh, great. Uh -huh. Collaboration, and you can see all the stencils on one side, the other side, then. Come on, spin around. Yeah, I don't know how much of that I can capture. What does it say? There's some letters on there. Yes. Can you point it towards the camera, maybe? Yeah, this says appropriation. I see. And the other side says collaboration. Collaboration. And then there are a number of these stencil things mm -hmm. around it. I live in the neighborhood too. Where do you live? I live up on Crestmont. Crestmont. Sunset. Mm -hmm. And how do you know Peter? Uh, we've known each other for a long time. We've known each other, gosh, maybe 20 plus years. We mm -hmm. showed in the same gallery many years ago. Uh, was that Jan Baum? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, is that right? And do you have a uh, show in a gallery now? Or? No, actually one show just closed in downtown LA. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, actually I, I, I don't show with any galleries. I quit the art world about 20 oh. years ago. Why is that? Because I hated the art world. Oh. I hate the art world. What did you do then? Um, I, I've been teaching mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I kept on working, but uh, I was not involved in the commercial galleries. I, was, okay. I, I managed to somehow survive. Mm -hmm. I see. Why don't you tell me about this piece? It, <clears throat> I noticed it before. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's really odd. Uh, um, I, I thought a lot about it, uh, and I was given the silhouette, a full on silhouette by Peter of uh, this uh, model named Yuko. And actually, Yuko is, the, is this woman right here. She's a well known model in Los Angeles. And I thought and thought, and, and I didn't want to just change things around or make a nice painting on top of the painting, you know. And I started thinking about having her carry something. I carry gold, as if she was carrying gold on a rucksack. I see. And then I didn't do it, I just made some sketches. And then I thought, I thought about her being burdened, not caring, but burdened by this weight, uh, this gold. And so it took on this uh, symbolic feeling of uh, kind of a political significance, you know, of uh, individuals being burdened by their culture, by their society. And I never do this kind of work, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, it's the kind of thing maybe that's lurking in the back of my mind uh, mm -hmm. as a responsible individual in the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, the meaning usually comes after the fact. For right. me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come beforehand. Do you see the image first and then the yeah. meaning? And then I execute mm -hmm. it and I think, oh, it has these ramifications. Mm -hmm. uh, it might have been in your subconscious, maybe? Or? Oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decide to uphold her uh, or to make a kind of connection with maybe a slavery of some kind mm -hmm. by uh, forging this, uh, this chain that she's uh, held down by. I see. And uh, so I also think it's kind of a silly image, a weird image, but it's also a very serious thing. And uh, some people will look at it in terms of it being very serious uh, and meaningful. And I might uh, have a much more frivolous... Mm -hmm. uh, What's the piece on the floor that's attached to her? Uh, it's uh, one of those window weights. You know, mm -hmm. those weights that uh, make windows go up, up and down. down. I see. Yeah, I have a whole bunch of them in my, in my garden. Oh, you do? I see. Okay, well, thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Yes. Hi, Trevor. Why don't you give me your name and a few vitals? <laughs>
My name is Trevor Norris. And how do you know Peter? I met Peter through a mutual English friend from Bernard. Uh -huh. when I worked downtown LA 31 years ago. You worked with Bernard? You know Bernard? Uh, Fairman, yeah. Yeah, Bernard. And Bernard and I went back before that. Bernard and I, I had a boyfriend in London and Bernard uh -huh. came to work at California Drop Club. Uh -huh. we, didn't, we didn't know each other then, but apparently I was the mean Trevor. He says, oh, you're that oh. Trevor. So. I knew Bernard very well. We went on vacations together. Oh, wow. He knew my that. daughter and um, I helped take care of him when he was yeah, ill. Yeah. Well, t uh, how long have you been an artist? <laughs> Since birth? No, no, no. <laughs> I discovered it going back to school when I was 21, maybe. Oh, is that right? What did you do? Uh, were you? Uh, what did you study in college before it's art? Ceramics. I think you do a year where you have to study everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, ceramics, I majored in ceramics. I see. And so you stopped doing ceramics and started painting? I started painting. I see. Uh huh. And why did you come to the States? I got refused by the Royal College of Art in London, mm -hmm. and there was a really, there was a professor there from Syracuse. And he said, "I don't worry about it. Get into a, get into a college in the U.S." And Syracuse took me, and I got accepted by Santa Barbara. And I went. <laughs> Santa Barbara. No, no. I see. So when you met Peter, did you feel like uh, you know a kind of camaraderie as artists or uh, friendship or? Yeah, right away. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Immediate. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, tell me about this. Uh, piece and how you got involved today. Uh, he invited me to, to be one of the artists to co collaborate with and this is... Can you turn screen. it a little? Uh-huh. Okay. Forget about the penis. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and okay. uh, it's a letter I broke up with somebody and this letter was so typified this uh, dysfunctional relationship that I saved it and I was going to do something with it at some point. So this figure came in, uh, I took the letter, blew it up on the computer and had screen, screens made and uh, silk screen a clear pigment and then sprinkled, a clear gel and then sprinkled pig pigments on it. Hmm. The majority of the pigment is uh, eggshells that have been uh, put in the toaster oven and heated up, they darken. I grind them in the water and pestle to make them mine, and then I just sprinkle those over the gel, and then blow the rest off. So uh, that had, excuse me, but that had a little to do with ceramics, right? And it's a very interesting upcoming full cycle. Yes. And even more so because some of the light in here yeah. mm -hmm. is if I take the eggshells and I put them in a 06 kiln, they turn back to calcium and carbonate, mm -hmm. which is a pure white pig pigment. So the scraps of the stuff, like the small pieces, I, 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 put, I put it in the box and I fire it in the kiln and it comes out as a pure white pigment. Mm -hmm. Kind of pure, a little gray. So some of the scrap on the pure white, it's actually titanium dioxide. And then the pure black is uh, charcoal sticks up with the coffee grind, grind, grinder. So that is like, uh, that's, coffee, that's ground uh, charcoal sticks. Wait, now, um you didn't silk screen with pigment. No, I silk screen with a clear gel. With the gel. Dropped it on and blew it off. Oh, it dropped it on and blew it off, and then put a fixative over it. No, I spray fixed it when it was all completely. When it was complete. But nice thing that happened, like it didn't screen well there, but you get this. And this is kind of white area where it got stuck and it wouldn't come off. I, I like that accident, which I think also connects to ceramics because in ceramics there's a lot of happy accidents. So. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. And um, how did the, the concept of doing all of this relate to what Peter asked you to do? He just said do anything with it. Anything at all? Yeah. So, uh, so I, it kind of was an inspiration? I don't figuratively, but this man I stuck with black and it just seemed like a perfect uh -huh. surface to use this text and also a material that has something to do with the beginning and the end of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I see. Is that too heavy? Oh, no, yeah. not at all. It's very interesting. Okay. So this is the only piece you did? I want to done. I have planned to use this letter and actually what I want to do is, because um, everything in my life is coming full cycle. So I've got, I saw a show when I was much younger, a lot younger, of the Tate in London. 
there was the only two pieces I remember was Anne Ryan Hart Blue and Blue painting, which would be very odd to even be called a painting as a young person, and a piece by Piero Manzoni where he um, candid our shit. Uh -huh. Then he also did things later, he did something with body parts, but he did things with eggs and he would pierce the eggs, suck the inside out, uh -huh. blow his breath and seal it. Uh -huh. And then he entombed these in this little coffin-like box. Uh -huh. So that stuck with me 32 years later, wow. I found something I could do with it. Yeah, very so, interesting. Yeah. And what else are you working on? on uh, abstractions with these materials. Uh -huh. Basically, I'm doing a big grid piece, little 16, 18 by 18 inch wood panels, and they're really based on the Reinhardt cross and Mazzoni's materials. Uh -huh. And you, you also teach, correct? Sorry. You, you teach art. I'm uh, teaching. Uh, I'm currently teaching an exhibition design class. Uh, I'm sorry, could you I'm say? I'm teaching an exhibition design class. Oh, I see. Orange Coast College, and I'm teaching ceramics and mold making for ceramics and sculpture in USC. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. Nancy Kais is. Uh, a junk artist actually. She takes thing, uh, trash and makes them into art pieces. I've known her for quite a long time, this is Cheryl speaking. And so she took Peter's image and then at the bottom put some pieces that are very interesting on the feet and the ankles. So next to Nancy's work is an artist, Lino Martinez. And this piece is quite different using Peter's images. This is Peter's fabulous garden out uh, in front of the studio. The doors from the studio open up into the terraces here where he's planted a lot of flowers and I think there's some fruit trees. He worked very hard on it. It's a big part of his life. This is another artist. Why don't you tell me your name? Uh, sorry. My name is Michael Walker. I see. And this is the piece you did, right? Why don't we go outside? Okay. And we can sit and talk there. So tell me a little bit, how do you know Peter? <laughs> uh, I think I know Peter. I think I met. And, uh, Did you know Peter through Art Center? No. Uh -huh. I'm self taught. Self taught, I see. Yeah. Do you have a studio nearby? Not particularly nearby, but I do have a studio. It's in the Highland Park area. I north see. Of downtown. Uh -huh. And have you ever worked with Peter before? I see. Uh -huh. Well, actually, I take that back. Um, I curated an exhibition at a gallery. Which I just sit on the board at the 50 studio at the oh, park. I see. I here did an exhibition there last fall, almost best was giving thanks, and uh, I uh, invited Peter to do a collaborative piece for it. I see. What kind of art do you do normally? Typically, I draw and paint. Most of my work is woman centered, as is this piece, and generally it grows out of my immersion in Mexican rural culture that I married into 31 years, nine months ago. I see. So, um, are you leaving? Uh -huh. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thank you. Hope to see you the night. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll leave you. Great. Take care. <laughs> uh, so, you do figurative painting of women, mainly. Is that right? Something like that. I, mm -hmm. My work focuses on the spiritual innocence inside people. Uh -huh. And I find, I adore women. And I find that you have. It's very vibrant, and I try to illuminate that. Mm -hmm. I noticed this was an older woman's figure that you did. Is there a reason for that? Um, I can't remember particularly all of the options, all of the silhouettes that Peter offered, but I was particularly intrigued with the idea um, of trying to create uh, an honorable uh, representation of an older woman. Mm -hmm. As women age, they're sort of relegated to invisibility in the culture, and uh, I wanted to celebrate the beauty of the inside.
I see. Uh huh. How long did you work on that piece? I spent far longer thinking about what to mm -hmm. do, mm -hmm. less time in uh, realizing. See. Uh -huh. And um, how would you describe Peter as an artist? <laughs> you don't know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I love his work, but I, I didn't know what his work. Have you been to the studio here a bit? Uh, once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> That's fine. Thanks. Right. So, tell me your name. I am Rebecca Mendes. And you're one of the artists here? Yes, right. yes, I am. Um, I created one of the pieces uh, in collaboration with Peter. One of them was very much taking the idea, the conceptual idea, and then working more with the idea rather than, per se, the artwork itself, because my medium is uh, video, not video. painting. So, that was one of the hardest right. things. Like, what do I do with this? Mm -hmm. Cut out. <laughs> So your piece, uh, uh, film, is from Iceland, and why did you choose Iceland? Why were you there? Yeah, um, okay, many reasons. Iceland became a very important place. We have gone, my husband and I, go to locations, for example, like the Sahara Desert, Chile, the north of Chile, the desert of Atacama, mm -hmm. the south of Patagonia, and then Iceland. Looking for these like sublime places, but also very extreme ways in which nature performs. Nature performs at different speeds in these places, either completely slow down, so the time seems elongated, or incredibly quick, like the eruption of a new island, or the eruption or mud that is boiling. So it is the extreme of speeds that is so unfamiliar to me. So that on lack of familiarity allows me to see nature and you. Have you been to Iceland just once or more? Twice. Twice, I think. Uh, yeah. In the same season? No, slightly different. One of them was in June, the other one was in August and September. Oh, so think. August and September was unbelievable. It was basically not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. It was about 16 days of perfect sun. No. And I needed, for my work, yeah. I needed more of the weather because I have a, a series called Weatherscapes. Oh. But then in June it was beautiful. We were completely uh, surrounded with uh, fog and it was very cold. A lot of sunlight in June, actually. Yes, we actually had 23 hours sunlight. It only went down around 11, mm -hmm. kissed right underneath, and then immediately came out. Right. The most beautiful light. So when were you there to do this piece? I was there in 2008, just last oh, summer, uh -huh. around uh, June. And what will this piece, have you had it in other shows? Have you installed it in other No, this actually, I created it for, uh, for this show, although I wanted to of course, I filmed it then and I knew it would come, but I called it Recurrence Relations. I'm interested in cycles and uh, in the nature. How is it that the nature of matter has a lot to do with how mathematical equations work? Like, for example, the book on Foreman uh, by Darcy Thompson. I forget the title, I should know, 1917. And uh, so I work with a lot of these mathematical ideas. So this one, Recurrence Relations, Adam, my husband and muse and studio partner, he comes, emerges from the fall and walks all the way past and then comes back. I see. So a little bit kind of like aimless but determined. So as if there is a greater intelligence leading his movement. Have you ever collaborated with Peter before? No, this no. is the first time. And now really more of collaboration is more of our prints. Because this video piece was more my interpretation of the of the outline, of the cutout of the body as the body traverses through space and through the weather. Do you, do you also teach? Yes, I am a, a professor at UCLA, the Design oh. Media Art. Is that right? Uh -huh. uh, in the, and there I teach some courses, Foundation of Design and uh, Basic Media Art, and also some advanced courses and uh, graduate studies. Uh -huh. But obviously you have time for your own work. Oh, I have to have it. Right, right. <laughs> and it is hard. It's very, it's, I'm juggling too many things, but it's exciting. Yeah. How long have you used film as your medium? You know what? I did my uh, uh, my master's at Art Center College of Design. I graduated in '96, and my specialty was video art. So it was since then that I really loved the idea of working with the medium, working with time, working with you know just the light, yeah. light and time. And uh, now uh, some of the footage. This one was shot with high definition video, but most of my footage is shot with 16 millimeter camera. I think that I transferred to digital high definition and then I create video installations. I think. Okay. Well, let's walk in.
just describe, uh, this is your husband Adam, and where are you in Iceland here? We are in the north, we are uh, near a place that is called uh, Akureyri, we are actually a little bit kind of like more east, um, and uh, it's pretty much the altiplano, like the highest tundra, uh, we had just passed a lot of the volcano, volcanoes, and we're going down into and this is like area that is constantly fogged is full of moss the moss is so cushiony and beautiful and the moss actually grows on the lava formation oh yeah in the right, lava right. yes exactly so mm -hmm. here is basically we just talked to uh, and at that time there were a lot of the birds were um, were uh, mating and having their eggs and so they were protecting their eggs so as soon as we arrived into this area and we started walking in all the most beautiful sounds of the birds but muffled by the fog and this film does not include sound not of the birds but here you're listening to a soundtrack that was created by an artist a composer called Drushner and he created this composition for another one of my uh, at any given moment series work it's not also video art installation more of a waterfall but here it seems that we given the space that it is so cave-like almost like wet here in uh, Peter's studio mm -hmm. made sense in right. terms of that and also because it's very monotonous it's very much about recurring uh -huh. events just curious if um, you talk to people there about the effects of global warming Yes, I'm very aware of that. For example, when we were there in 2006, they had just, um, the government had gone pretty much against the people's will of accepting Alcoa to create a dam, a series of dams that really have caused so much destruction. Of course, it has caused, it created some jobs, some jobs, but a country that has been so ahead, um, uh, really in terms of energy, doing their geothermal plants, it was retrograde to go with Alcoa that all they do was import Chinese workers to work on the factories. They didn't even employ their own people. And then they leave and of course they employ again their own people. So it's not even that it generates as many jobs as they thought. So so those kinds of things we talk to people. I'm very aware that I'm documenting something that might not exist in some years. At the time in 2006, they said that right at that point, Iceland was one of the cleanest, if not the cleanest country in the world. Mm -hmm. After Alcoa set the three, I think three plants and smelters, it would be the dirtiest in 12 years. Right. The dirtiest. Right. I mean, it's just, I mean, how of course they codify that is basically they're killing rivers, they're polluting the rivers that they would remain. It is incredibly mm -hmm. painful and unfortunate. Yeah. Well, the country also, uh, Iceland also declared bankruptcy, I think, shortly after that. Yeah, so but you know what? It has a lot to do. I, I hit this part, I'm very upset about the British and the Americans that a lot of the times they did the wrong part. Many mm -hmm. few people on the are strong uh, and very wealthy, but it really was suddenly of the mistakes of the United States and Britain, and they take a scapegoat as yeah. Iceland. So yeah. I'm no, angry at them. Right. <laughs> yes. Do you plan to go back? Oh yes, no, yes. No. We are. There is a wonderful um, library that is called the Library of Water, created by Ronnie Horn, who's an artist that I admire and love, um, and uh, she has a, a residency for writers and uh, hopefully artists too. So Adam and I, Adam is my husband is a writer mm -hmm. and so this might be one of those residences that he will propel mm -hmm. because this work was created by being in an art residency at the Gunnar Gunnarsson um, Klaus Tour which is somewhere in the um, southeast uh, near Hilstadir. Okay. Okay. And um, maybe you'll collaborate with Peter again too. Oh, I would love to. Uh, he uh, took me over to show what he did with the images from your film and writing her husband's name on it, so we'll put that all together. Thank you. Yeah. That's really yeah. wonderful. Great. Thank you very much. Are you two here today? Oh, we're here to support the Silver Lake community. <laughs> okay. So, uh, do you, uh, what do you think about the terrain? Does that look familiar to you at all? It looks like Iceland, I remember, mm -hmm. from about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the uh, mm -hmm. sort of and cold. The moss on the lava, actually, is what the artist just said. So this is her husband. She does films about cycles, and he walks forward and then kind of goes back.